What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. It's the new year, which means we got new stock for all of our tees. So we have the Midnight Special back in all sizes. So get them while they're hot. Those things sell out like crazy. We got the navy blue with white, you know, real nice for that kind of outdoor, you know, maybe going out for a beer with the boys. And we got the gray one, maybe like a gym shirt or something I'm like that. Gray. I'm wearing the gray actually. Yeah, use it as a work shirt right away. And we got hats too. So we got uh, red and I believe we got navy blue. Got navy blue and black. So believe that. We got all three colors, embroidered trucker hat for those who like them. We got three colors, three new colors, and we got new graphics coming soon too. So make sure you jump over to the shop and buy some shit. We uh, were back in the shop, um, snuck in for, for a little day, um, you know, maybe a couple through, uh, through the Chrissy break, but um, hope everyone had an amazing Christmas. Um, and yeah, coming into the new year, uh, ours was pretty low key, just had the little fella. So we were um, able to get down to the beach and uh, caught up with some mates and had a few beers. So that was really nice. And um, yeah, today I'm, I'm in, got a bit of mo motivation and uh, we are working on the 32 frame. Um, the shop's quite clean at the moment. The old's is still there, Roadster, race car. Just drove that back. I drove it home over the break and just kind of drove around the neighborhood a bit, showed a few of the kids. But um, I think when I was racing in Collie, I, uh, I well, I, I know I did. I certainly um, lost second gear. So it was making a pretty bad sound. So I pulled the top off just then and looked and um, several teeth are missing. So transmission's got to come out. But that's okay, because there's a few things I want to do to the car anyway, so... Um, but yeah, that'll be in a different episode. But anyways, back on the 32 frame, uh, in our previous video, we got about 90% of the way through the cross member. So I still need to fix these little problem areas um, where the, there's a few hairline cracks. Um, and I'm just going over a few bits to kind of lay out the way I'm going to actually bolt it to the table so I know where um, everything's going to be, try and get a laser on it, get it square, um, you know, uh, each horizontally and vertically, get everything set up where it's supposed to be. Um, I will be removing these rear um, frame horns. Uh, you know, kind of for what I'm trying to do with that Roadster, I don't need them. Um, but for the purpose of trying to get everything square off of our measurements um, on here, I want to make sure to leave them for now. So I do need to make a rear spreader bar, which will then um, also allocate uh, the mounting holes for the rear bit that I'll make off this table. Um, up for the front, I need to make a spreader bar as well. And rather than making two, I'm planning on using this brake uh, cross member um, arm that was used for Model A's. Um, they would usually pivot on these little bushings here. And this would be your front and rear brake rod, uh, I believe. I think that's right. Um, but anyways, they make a really neat spreader bar. So as you can see, if that was in there, it would look really, really cool. And then it's got this neat little mount on it here. And with this mount, I will probably use it for mounting a nice little fog light or maybe the license plate. Um, unsure exactly what it's going to be used for, but I will leave it there for the time being. So what I need to do is just move this over. I'm going to set up a little jig, going to work off some of these measurements off the front here. Um, and we need to make a template for the insides of these and cut those out. And then we'll have to square this up, trim that, get that to f um, the size that we need for the width of the internal uh, frame rails. 
And then we will bolt that in for now. Um, and then I can start working on the cracks, the holes. Um, oh, how's that? You can see it's like, there's actually a little piece in there that wants to come out. So this is definitely a bit of a problem area. So I'll end up having to replace this bit here. And then just kind of going over more of the frame, we still have that really bad area. And this area too has been kind of buckled. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to probably punch all these rivets out, unfortunately, pull this cross member out and then try and fix these areas. And then we will um, reinstall the rear cross member. So I just wanna make sure everything is kind of, you know, where it's supposed to be. You can see this one's welded um, on there. This one's not, so I just want to make sure. Got another little crack right here in the frame. Um, so yeah, I want to make sure we kind of have everything square. So I'll leave it in for the time being. I'll get the rear spreader bar made as well. Um, but for the moment, let's get into getting this Model A brake cross member set up as our um, spreader bar for the front. So I just got a little bit of paper. I'm just gonna stick it in here and do the old dirty, dirty hand trick just to get an edge. Um, so I know where to trim this and then I can transfer this onto a bit of steel. I will end up using probably some quarter inch or 3 16 um, kind of whatever's in the pile. Just have a look now. That's all right. I can use a transfer punch to same size as that to get me centers. But there we go. That's good enough. So I'll just cut that out with some scissors. Ouch. So that's my little setup. This is where I'd love to have the plasma table. But that'll come. Hopefully early this year. Still trying to do my homework on a good company and a good table. If, uh, if anyone in Australia has got any tips or um, yeah, companies that they've used, I've heard of that blue carve. Um, and I've kind of spoke to them. They seem pretty nice. Um, if anyone's ever dealt with them, let me know in the comments. It'd be nice to know. But this doesn't have to be perfect. So what I can do now is transfer this onto some metal and then we'll cut two of these out. And then we can bolt them in, figure out the width of this cross member um, and we'll start to get kind of all the little bits in a line. So let's get this frame off. All right. So we have a little piece of metal there. I kind of want to transfer this onto a bit of cardboard, to be honest. It's probably not totally worth it though, is it? We don't need to Let's see if I can get them in a get one in there and one down in here.
All right, so we just got those cut out and I just run the little countersink bank just around the edges, just to take the burrs off. So I'll clamp this back down to the table and I'll cut these out with the angle grinder and I may bolt them together and then I'll use those on the linisher to make sure they're both the same. So I'll grab the angle grinder. So I'm just going to bolt these together um, using a couple of half inch bolts and I'm basically just making sure that they're together and when I go to sand them on the linisher they're even on both sides. So I'm just trying to figure out which side is best or where they line up perfect. So I think that's it. So I'm just going to bolt these together and then we'll start sanding them. these drawings I know that the outside diameter is 23 and 3 quarters so putting that into mil is 603 mil virtually so just rough it and say 600 um, so what I've done I've used 5 mil plate so I know that these are each 5 mil so a total of 10 mil I need to take into consideration while we trim this so I got this now mounted to the table um, on our center line and measuring off the center line I know exactly where to cut it and I've squared it off the table so now I can just cut it with the angle grinder once those are cut off then I'll set up a little jig and we'll get the flange plate set up for this
just got a quick, made a little jig, nothing simple, just squared everything off. And then the outside diameter of each of these flans, flanges um, is exactly what I need in order to put it in between that and then have the, the overall uh, outside diameter of a 106.3 mil or 23 and three quarter, I believe is what it is. So um, right now I'm just gonna tack these up and, uh, and then we'll give this thing a full weld and then we'll install it and see what it's gonna look like. So now we got it tacked in. I'll probably try and do a pass on the top where I can kind of get comfortable. And then we can kind of take it out of the jig and flip it over, re, um, re clamp it in and then yeah, it should be, should be all right. I got the top in. I'll just put a little bit too much heat. It's just when it's kind of grabbing. Um, that oh, looks all right. We'll let that cool down for a sec and then we'll um, flip it over. But I'll just quickly show you. Nothing special. Just a nice weld that's solid enough for holding this cross member in. All right, so I need to get to the other side of this. So I can weld this side. Probably not really need it there, but actually I'll just leave it like that. I always forget to turn this off, and then the batteries always die. But, that is welded in. Right around, good pass on both sides. Looks pretty good. So there you have it. A simple cross member that hopefully is relatively straight, which I kind of feel like it's gonna be on the a little bit. That's cooling down. We're gonna finish this off. So what we still need to do is weld up these hairline cracks that we have on all four corners. So I'm gonna wire wheel these now. I'm gonna drill a little hole right at the end to stop where the crack is. And then I'll dremel these out a little bit with just a little carbide bit. And then um, we'll just do a little pass of the TIG on these. You got me acting. 
acting out You All oh, tenderness is out the window What you do to me when the cold bites blue is straight So I'm going to use the little carbide bit and this little guy as well because I can kind of just come on the inside of the crack a bit. All I'm trying to do is just scallop out a little area just so I have somewhere to put a bit of material in. The crack goes all the way through. It's quite hard to get to the back side of it. So I'm just trying to make that little V and then I'll be able to um, you know, get a bit of welding. So that one actually didn't go all the way through to the backside, so I don't really need to drill it. And the rest of them actually go straight into the hole. So that's a good thing. Just means I don't kind of have to pre-drill the little holes, but. Good. So I'll just show you. You can kind of see how it's all scalloped out. Sorry, the screen's gone black. Let's try that again. Okay, so you can kind of see there where it's scalloped out as well as that one. So we're just going to do the same to these little hairline guys here. And then we actually have somewhere to get that filler rod in there and then we can just kind of grind it smooth, hopefully eliminate them, bolt this thing back in. So now you can see where I've ground that one out. So now we're gonna weld this and on other news, if we just walk over here quickly, Josh has got a little lunch thing going on. Well, hello. And what's the special ingredient in there? Chimchiri. Chimchiri. Sauce. It's the best thing ever. Delicious. His girlfriend showed us once. You can, you can definitely say she's a fan in our books. Great cook. Turn this light off. Plug this in, welder. So it just blew this area out as well. And then um, just hit it with a little bit of metho just to clean it, so. Now, we should be able to. When you're TIG welding too, get comfy. Don't just like rush into it. I always do, but say that, but yeah, get. Get that, get that position right. Get it where you feel like it's a nice spot. That tungsten's sticking out way too far. So I'm just going to grind these down so there's no high points and this is done.
So those are virtually gone. There's a little couple marks for where the weld was, but you're never gonna see this it goes in the frame, but at least those hairline fractures are now fixed and welded up. All right, so you can kind of get the idea of what we did. Super simple. So this is your original one with your brackets that mount to the bottom of the frame. And those are your pivots for the original brake assembly. And then closely in front of that, you can see what we've chopped off. So we cut those off. We made some flanges. Then we welded them on on both sides. So now we are left with this. And I just thought of something too. Well, I can kind of fudge it, but I did think if I need another bracket, like I could kind of run one off and then another one here and then I could hold the license plate or something. Um, but I do like stuff that's a bit asymmetrical, so I probably won't. But what you could do is you could drill this out, bang this off and slide it on this side. And then you would have a symmetrical kind of factory looking cast bracket that would hold you know, two fog lamps or a horn and a fog lamp or even your license plate, like I mentioned, but basically I've kind of sat this in here. So all the repairs are virtually done to that. And this is kind of what we're looking at. So what I'm gonna do now is um, put the camera down and then I'll try and bolt this thing in uh, just temporarily and we'll see what it looks like. Just got some half inch bolts. I'm trying to make sure it's the accurate size. And then what did I like? So you have kind of two options with this, with this bracket. You can have it where it sits up a little bit or you can put it in this way and have it so it's kind of at the back. So I don't, I don't actually know which, which way I like better. That way or maybe, maybe this way. So the front frame horns on these are slightly tweaked. So the next video will be getting this thing properly jigged up on the table. Um, using the laser, squaring everything off. We will have to make a rear spreader bar, even though I probably will be cutting off the frame horns, but if they're, it, as long as it kind of gives us a, um, a reference point, we will use the rear, rear ones, just so everything stays kind of where it should. have it welded in or bolted in sorry so we got it bolted in looks really nice just a simpler idea and look there's probably different options I could have um, welded this nut to this plate and then moved this right forward so it would have followed the same radius but I kind of like the way that it's kind of stepped back a little bit um, yeah, there's, there's so many different ways you could have done this, but I think that looks really cool. It also kind of follows the plane of the, um, the frame itself. So the fall comes down and then meets right up with that. So everything's kind of in, in proportion. Um, but yeah, I think that looks really cool. So what I'm gonna show you is I'll just get one of the boys to hold the grill up and then I'll just give you a few options of kind of what it looks like. Okay. so. I just set up the 32 grill um, just with a bit of wire, just so you can see and put a little bit of leather behind it just so you can't see through. So you can kind of get the idea that there's a radiator there. And um, so this is the, the, the finished cross member basically bolted in. Um, and I'll just kind of show you again. We kind of just went over that before and after, but there's your Model A brake cross member. Um, and you know, once modified and cut with some flanges, it looks great. So with some nice hardware, 
I would definitely suggest, yeah, not probably using those bolts or maybe trying to lay them off or finishing them or put some stainless ones in, whatever. But that's, um, yeah, and don't throw these away because you'll use these one day. I have a box of them and I use them all the time for brackets. I cut them off or drill them or do all sorts with them. Um, but yeah, so what I was saying is with that little mount on there and you know, I had mentioned that you can put it kind of more up or sitting back, but what you could do now is fabricate up a little piece that could kind of hold off that. So now you have sort of like a little asymmetrical kind of license plate mount for it, which honestly license plates just always look on, on cars. But you can, um, yeah, you could do all sorts of things. Usually guys whack them in there, but I just think they look awful. So another option, that's that old um, Walla horn that I got. So we could make a little mount for that, have that sit off the front. That would look really cool. And then, you know, we have our horn up the front. Everyone can hear it for the six volt that it probably is, but it does say okay on there. So don't even know if it actually works. If it doesn't, we'll just have to put another one, hide it somewhere. And again, another option would just be a nice single fog light, which would also look really nice too. It's kind of a style that a lot of guys used to run, um, running a pair or even a singular one. I really like a singular. I do like the mount, how it's offset. And um, yeah, like I said, just asymmetrical stuff's kind of cool. I, I like it. So yeah, you kind of, you know, have a bit of option to play around with. Um, you know, you still got a bit of clamp if you wanted to put a license plate topper or something on there or whatever, but just a different idea for not running your kind of stock standard stainless straight bar across or the ones that kind of have that little 22 degree kind of kick or whatever in them. It looks neat. You have a bit of idea with this. Um, you know, you can drill this out, you can spin this around, you can move it anywhere you want. Like I mentioned before, you could add two and two would kind of allocate two brackets for your mount. But I think if you were to make a pretty nice mount off this with a flat plate that just goes on the back, you know, that would look, look the part, I think. So yeah, just something slightly different than your standard ones that you can just buy off eBay and it's really not that hard to make as you guys just saw. So just get some scrap flat bar you have lying around, make some flanges, jig it up, bolt it in, and there you have it. A Model A cross member made into a spreader bar for the 32, so pretty cool. But this was kind of just a simple video. On the next one, I will have this entire frame and basically go with you how I'm gonna jig it up and bolt it to the table to make sure that we have everything straight as I've mentioned before. We have riveting to do, we have lots of frame repair to do, um, and wanna make sure that this thing is square and good when we take it off the table to fit the Roadster body on it. So this is priority right now to try and make sure we get this thing square before that body goes on there. And then we know exactly where to cut out those subframe um, rails across in the back of the Roadster. We'll know where to cut those rear frame horns off. And um, yeah, so small step, but hopefully it'll get there. So we will see you next week on another episode of Bennett's Customs. Thanks guys. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit notifications because then you'll know when we come. But Chrissy's over, so we got work to do. We got mate, it's mating season now, you know? That's, that's gotta go on here together as one. <laughs>